ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ಭಾಗವತಗೀತೆ ಗೌರವಕ್ತ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ we going to continue reading from bhagavad gita as it is chapter 1 text 42 do shar ete gula kulagna nam do shar ete kulagna nam varna sankara karake varna sankara karake utsya dyante jati dharma utsya dyante jati dharma ಕುಲಾಧರ್ಮಾಶ್ವತ community projects for the four orders of human society combined with family welfare activities as they are set forth by the institution of sanatan dharma or varnashram dharma are designed to enable the human being to attain ultimate salvation therefore the breaking of the sanatan dharma tradition by irresponsible leaders of society brings about chaos in that society and consequently people forget the aim of life vishnu such leaders are called blind and persons who follow such leaders are sure to be led into chaos so since yesterday we have been hearing the reasons arjuna is giving some reasons to krishna why he does not want to fight mm. he was that do you remember any of the reasons mm. because he didn't want to kill his uh, kinsmen he was we yeah. are yeah. the reasons so he is yeah because he was in the mode of uh, goodness at that time uh, yes yes and he had uh, he felt he didn't want to kill his uh, like relatives because yes. uh, there will be different effects of like if elderly will be killed it will affect the whole family later on all the tradition will be uh you know uh, be a mess yeah that's right yeah then when the elders are gone then who will train the younger people in the traditional yeah. family values when the younger are not trained family values will be lost then the women will be exploited and then yeah. there will be unwanted population when there is unwanted population there will be war and pestilence mm-hmm. nobody is going to be there properly following the rituals to offer the the oblations to the ancestors mm-hmm. and then then now he's saying the community projects are going to be stopped mm-hmm. the welfare act family welfare activities will be stopped community projects will be stopped so these are some reasons he's giving to krishna why he doesn't want to fight mm. utsana kula dharma naam utsana kula dharma naam manushyanam janardana manushyanam janardana narake niyatam vaso narake niyatam vaso ಭವತಿ ಅನುಶುಶ್ರುಮತಿ ಅನುಶುಶ್ರುಮ ಓ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಮೇಂಟೇನರ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಹರ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ಡಿಸೈಪ್ಲಿಕ್ ಸಕ್ಸೆಷನ್ ದಟ್ ದೋಸ್ ಹೂಸ್ ಫ್ಯಾಮಿಲಿ ಟ್ರೆಡಿಷನ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಾಯ್ಡ್ ಡ್ವೆಲ್ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ಇನ್ ಹೆಲ್ ಅರ್ಜುನ ಬೇಸಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಆರ್ಗ್ಯುಮೆಂಟ್ ನಾಟ್ ಆನ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಪರ್ಸನಲ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೀರಿಯನ್ಸ್ ಬಟ್ ಆನ್ ವಾಟ್ ಹಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಹರ್ಡ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಅಥಾರಿಟೀಸ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ವೇ ಆಫ್ ರಿಸೀವಿಂಗ್ ರಿಯಲ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ one cannot reach the real point of factual knowledge without being helped by the right people who is already established in that knowledge there is a system in the varnashram institution by which before death one has to undergo the process of atonement in his for his sinful activities one who is always engaged in sinful sinful activities must utilize the process of atonement called prayaschit 
without doing so one surely will be transferred to hellish planets to undergo miserable lives as the hell of sinful activities as the result okay. of sinful activities yeah so now one now he's saying what's going to happen if this family tradition is lost he saying the um, family members will go to hell because then they'll become irreligious and sinful and there's no tradition to follow so the point here of course the main point krishna oh krishna maintainer of the people arjuna knows krishna's position that krishna mm -hmm. is the maintainer the katha upanishad says nityo nityanam chetanas chetananam eko bahunam yo vidadati kama Katha Upanishad says that there are so many eternals. You know, we are all living entities. We are all eternal. But Katha Upanishad says there's one eternal who's maintaining all the other eternals. And that is that, that person who's maintaining all of us. That's Krishna. That's Krishna's position. That he is the maintainer. And Arjuna is saying that he has heard this knowledge from disciplic succession. So he's not saying, oh, it's according to me or I googled it up or something. No, he's heard it from authorities. That's the, that's the way we should receive knowledge from authority. Aho bata mahat papam. Aho bata mahat papam. Kartum yava sitavayam. Kartum yava sitavayam. Yad raja sukha lobhena. Yad raja sukha lobhena. Kantum swajanam udhyata. Kantum swajanam udhyata. Alas, how strange it is that we are preparing to commit greatly sinful acts. Driven by the desire to enjoy royal happiness, we are intent on killing our own kinsmen. Driven by selfish motives, one may be inclined to such sinful acts as the killing of one's own brother, father or mother. There are many such instances in the history of the world. But Arjuna, being a saintly devotee of the Lord, is always conscious of moral principles and therefore takes care to avoid such activities. So again, now Arjuna is saying, you know, just to fulfill our desires, we are preparing, we are doing sinful activities mm. in our position. We have so many desires and then we don't consider, is, is this the way I should be acting or no? Because the desire is so strong. So Krishna is saying, driven by the, I'm, I'm sorry, Arjuna is saying, driven by the desire to enjoy royal happiness. He's saying, oh my God, I'm going to pre perform a sinful activity because I have this desire. I'm going to get a kingdom. He's, actually, it's not him. You know, he does not have this desire. He's a pure devotee. But mm -hmm. the Duryodhana and his party have this desire, no? That... Mm -hmm. I'm going to kill if my brothers just so that I can get the kingdom. Yadi mam apratikaram. Yadi mam pratikaram. Ashastram shastra paneya. Ashastram shastra paneya. Dhritrashtra rane hanyas. Dhritrashtra rane hanyas. Tanme shema taram bhavet. Better for me if the sons of Dhritarashtra, weapons in hand, were to kill me unarmed and unresisting on the battlefield. It is the custom, according to Kshatriya fighting principles, that an unarmed and unwilling foe should not be attacked. Arjuna, however, decided that even if attacked by the enemy in such an awkward position, he would not fight. He did not consider how much the other party was bent upon fighting. All these symptoms are due to soft-heartedness, resulting from his being a great devotee of the Lord. So he is so compassionate. Soft-heartedness. 
Whereas the Duryodhan wants to, Duryodhan has the desire, he wants the kingdom, so he's willing to kill his brothers. But Arjuna is like, no, I don't want to kill. So a pure devotee, a devotee of the Lord is always soft-hearted. Sanjay Obacha. Sanjay, Sanjay Uvacha. Evam Uktva Arjuna Sankhye. Evam Uktva Arjuna Sankhye. Arthopastha Upavishad. Arthopastha Upavishad. Visrijya Sasharam Chapam. Visrijya Sasharam Chapam. Yoka Samvigna Manasa. Soka Samvigna Manasa. Sanjay said, Arjuna, having thus spoken on the battlefield, cast aside his bow and arrows and sat down on the chariot, his mind overwhelmed with grief. While observing the situation of his enemy, Arjuna stood up on the chariot, but he was so afflicted with lamentation that he sat down again, setting aside his bow and arrows. Such a kind and soft-hearted person in the devotion service of the Lord is fit to receive self-knowledge. Thus end Bhaktivedanta Purport's first chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Observing the armies on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. So Arjuna, great warrior. He used to take great pride in his Gandiva bow. Mm. And here, the Gandiva bow, if someone would tell him to put it down, he would get so angry. Now he's so afflicted that he is putting it down himself. He's lamenting so much. And then Prabhupada is pointing out that Arjuna, because he's so soft-hearted, then he's fit to receive the self-knowledge. Soft-hearted, why? Devotional service to the Lord. So when one engages in devotional service to the Lord, he'll automatically get soft-heartedness. Our hearts are very hard. Very, very hard. We need to soften the heart so Krishna can steal the heart. Krishna likes soft butter. It does not like hard stone. Right now our hearts are like hard stone. By engaging in devotional service, we can soften the heart. Um, that brings the end to the first chapter. Chapter 2, contents of the Gita summarized. Sanjay Vacha. Sanjay Vacha. Tam Tata Kripa Yavishtam. Tam Tata Kripa Yavishtam. Ashrupur Nakulekshanam. Ashrupur Nakulekshanam. Vishidantam Idam Bakyam. Vishidantam Bakyam. Vacha Madhusudana. Vacha Madhusudana. Sanjay said, Seeing Arjuna full of compassion, his mind depressed, his eyes full of tears, Madhusudana, Krishna spoke the following words. Material compassion, lamentation and tear tears are all signs of ignorance of the real self. Compassion for the eternal soul is self-realization. The word Madhusudana is significant in this verse. Lord Krishna killed the demon Madhu. And now Arjuna wanted Krishna to kill the demon of misunderstanding that had overtaken him in the discharge of his duty. No one knows where compassion should be applied. Compassion for the dress of a drowning man is senseless. A man fallen in the ocean of knee science cannot be saved simply by rescuing his outward dress, the gross material body. One who does not know this and laments for the outward dress is called a Shudra or one who laments unnecessarily. Arjuna was a Kshatriya and this conduct was not expected from him. Lord Krishna, however, can dissipate the lamentation of the ignorant man and for this purpose the Bhagavad Gita was sung by him. This chapter instructs us in self-realization by an analytical study of the material body and the spirit soul. As explained by the Supreme Authority, Lord Sri Krishna, 
This realization is possible when one works without attachment to fruitive results and is situated in the fixed conception of the real self. Mm -hmm. What is uh, Prabhupada saying in the purport as to what are the signs of ignorance of the real self? Compassion, lamentation, and tears. Material compassion. So that means shouldn't we be compassionate to others? You know, we see someone suffering, then no, we should. We should be material compassion. compassion. Hmm? Uh, material so. compassion here signifies. Uh, what does it signify here? Material compassion. The compassion. Yeah. Compassion for the eternal soul is self-realization. So, first of all, ignorance is that we are thinking I'm the body, not the soul. And based on that, we are thinking everyone else is also the body, not the soul. So, each of us is in distress at every moment. And then, when we are trying to dissipate the distress of others only on the bodily platform, that is material compassion. But here, Prabhupada is saying, compassion for the eternal soul is self-realization. What is compassion for the eternal soul? Giving the knowledge to everyone. Hey, you're not the body, you're an eternal part and parcel of Krishna. Go back to Krishna, chant Hare Krishna. That is the real compassion. Now, because now Prabhupada is saying material compassion is ignorance of real self. We may try to say, oh, that means I should not be compassionate at all on any level, only on the spiritual level. Yeah, it's true. We could do that. But for, for social etiquette, that's not very good. We still have to be compassionate even on a material level. No? Say somebody is really in a very distressful condition, then we try to help them in any way that we can. At the same time, give them knowledge of Krishna consciousness. Mm. Is that okay? Yeah. Like if when the beggars would be begging, then Prabhupada would say, okay, give them little. Prabhupada would himself give. It's material compassion after all. But he would give very little so that, you know, out of his compassion, right? That is material compassion. But he's saying, okay, they are in such a distressful situation. So don't give them too much with which they may misuse the money. But just, just a very little. Okay. So Madhusudana, why, what's the significance in this verse? Krishna has referred Madhusudana. Arjuna wants Krishna to kill the demon which is inside the grief and lamentation inside the mind of uh, Arjuna is going on. So Arjuna is asking Krishna to kill that uh, lamentation, demon of lamentation. Yeah, thank you. And what's the example Prabhupada is saying about compassion here? What's the example? Dress of the drowning person. Yes. The dress of the drowning person. So Prabhupada is saying when we are giving material compassion, that's like just saving the dress and not saving the person. So we should save the dress also and the person also. The person is giving, how can we save the person? Following Lord Chaitanya's instruction, Lord Chaitanya says, whoever you go, wherever you meet, you speak to them about Krishna. Give them Krishna consciousness. Give them a book. Give them prasad. Chant Hare Krishna. Speak to them about Krishna. Some way or the other. That's, that's the compassion for the soul, for, for the real person. So, and what is the reason? What's the purpose that Bhagavad Gita was sung by Krishna? Um, 
What is the diagnosis of people? Yeah. That's right. He put in confusion because of us. And what's the ignorance? That we are the body. Ignorant people think that we are the body and not the soul. But actually, we yeah. are the soul. And we are traveling yeah. for mental life. That's right. So we are all in ignorance because we are all thinking we are the body. We may theoretically know, okay, I'm the soul, but do we act like the soul? You know, so Bhagavad Gita is relevant for each and every one of us because we are all in ignorance. In theory, yeah, we try to understand we are the soul. But, but in reality, we all act we are the body. Mm. Um, Prabhupada is saying this realization is possible when one works without attachment to fruitive results and is situated in the fixed conception of the real self. That when one, and theoretically also if one can understand, I'm, I'm the soul, and then not get attached to the results of the activities means do the activities for the pleasure of Krishna, offer the results of the activities to Krishna. As Krishna says in the later chapters, he says, oh, Arjuna, whatever you do, whatever you give, eat, or give away, whatever you, you do it for me. That is karma yoga, working for Krishna. How exactly do we like do everything for Krishna? Is it a kind of a prayer or we are just while doing something, we are thinking about I'm doing this for you, like talking to Krishna, like we are doing this for him. Is it like this or just thinking yeah. about I'm not doing doing this for myself or anything else, just for him? Yeah, the intention. Intention, okay. Yeah, the intention. What's my intention in be behind doing a certain activity? So I may say, Krishna, I'm doing it for you, but my real intention might be, oh, I'll be, I'll be happy if I do it. Mm -hmm. And that's what, you know. So doing like karma yoga, they explain, oh, I feel like eating French fries, so I'm going to cook the French mm -hmm. fries and I'll offer it to Krishna. Then I'll eat it. Okay. Yeah. So doing then that, so offering the results of our activities to Krishna. That mm -hmm. becomes karma yoga. Okay. And yeah, how do offering. we make... Uh, it's, it's, uh, whenever we do something, we are still focusing, focusing on achieving the results, right? Isn't it hard to not think about the results and just keep on doing our work? How yes, do we reach very... that stage when we get detached? It's true, it's so difficult because we are so used to doing things for ourselves. And then it just seems like a philosophy, you know, that do for Krishna. So how do we begin? We start hearing and chanting. Hearing and chanting regularly. Hearing from Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamrita, Srila Prabhupada's books, chanting, chanting the Hare Krishna mantra regularly. Gradually, gradually, gradually. We can be situated in that platform. It takes practice. Just like a child, he practices to walk. No? Initially, he'll keep falling, keep falling, but he keeps practicing. And then one day he's walking and he's running. So at our stage, we hear, we chant, avoiding the sinful activities. Okay, thank you. Thank okay. you. So what happens by hearing and chanting? When we are hearing, then we are using our ears for service of Krishna, no? as we said yesterday. So already it begins then. Service to Krishna begins by hearing. We are chanting, we are engaging our tongue in service of Krishna. So gradually, gradually we can build on that. So... Yeah, the reason I put out the material compassion here is because many of us initially may say, oh, that means I should not be compassionate to anyone on a material platform. 
No, we, we, we need to have a balance. You know, we can see ISKCON as a society also is doing so much whenever there is um, big calamities happening, how ISKCON as a society is going out of the way, for, for distributing food, you know, even when, even right now during the war, Prashad distribution is going on. Of course, Prashad is spiritual, but but the idea is we don't become hard-hearted to someone's material position also. No, we don't do that. We try to help them, but focus to give spiritual compassion. Tell everyone, hey, you're not the body or the soul. Prabhupada would say, if someone's itching, you may help them itch, but the soul will just get worse. But if you give them an ointment, then the sore will go away. So the ointment is Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram, Ram Hare Hare. Shri Bhagwan Uvacha. Shri Bhagwan Uvacha. Kutastva Kashmalam. Kutastva Kashmalam. Vishame Samupasthitam. Vishame Samupasthitam. Anarya Justam Aswargyam. Anarya Justam Aswargyam. Akirti Karamarjana. Akirti Karamarjana. The Supreme Personality of Godhead said, My dear Arjuna, Okay, uh, my dear Arjuna, how have these impurities come upon you? They are all, they are not at all befitting a man who knows the value of life. They lead not to higher planets but to infamy. Krishna and Supreme Personality of Godhead are identical. Therefore, Lord Krishna is referred to as Bhagwan throughout the Gita. Bhagwan is the ultimate in the absolute truth. The absolute truth is realized in the three phases of understanding, namely Brahman or the impersonal all-pervasive per spirit, Paramatma or the localized aspect of the Supreme within the heart of all living entities and Bhagwan or the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Krishna. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, this conception of the Absolute Truth is explained thus. Vadanti tat tatva vidas tatvam yaj jnanam advayam brahmeti param Parama Param Atmiti Bhagwan Iti Sabdyate. The absolute truth is realized in three phases of understanding by the knower of the absolute truth, and all of them are identical. Such phases of the absolute truth are expressed as Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagwan. These three divine as aspects can be explained by the examples of the sun which also has three different aspects, namely the sunshine, the sun surface, and the sun planet itself. One who studies the sunshine only is the preliminary student. One who understands the sun surface is further advanced, and one who can, can enter into the sun planet is the highest. Ordinary students who are satisfied by simply understanding the sunshine, its universal pervasiveness, and the glaring, the glaring effulgence of its impersonal nature, may be compared to those who can realize only the Brahman feature of the Absolute Truth. The student who has advanced still further can know the sun disk, which is compared to knowledge of the Paramatma feature of the Absolute Truth. And the student who can enter into the heart of the sun planet is compared to those who realize the personal features of the Absolute Truth. Therefore, the Bhaktas or the Transcendentalists who have realized the Bhagwan feature of the Absolute Truth are the topmost transcendentalists. Although all students who are engaged in the study of the absolute truth are engaged in the same subject matter, the sunshine, the sun disk, and the inner affairs of the sun planet cannot be separated from one another. And yet the students of the three different phases are not in the same category. The Sanskrit word Bhagwan is explained by the great authority Prashar Muni, the father of Vyasadeva. The Supreme Personality who possesses all riches, all strength, all fame, all beauty, all knowledge, and all renunciation is called Bhagwan. 
there are many persons who are very rich very powerful beautiful famous learned and very much detached but no one can claim that he possesses all riches all strength etc entirely only krishna can claim this because he is the supreme personality of godhead no living entity including brahma lord shiva or narayana can possess op- opulences as fully as krishna therefore it is concluded in the brahma samhita by lord brahma himself that lord krishna is the supreme personality of godhead no one is equal to or above him he is the primeval lord of bhagwan known as govinda and he is the supreme cause of all the causes ishwar parma krishna sat chitanand vigrah anandir adir govinda sarva karana karanam there are many personalities possessing the qualities of bhagwan but krishna is the supreme because none can excel him he is the supreme person and his body is eternal full of knowledge and bliss he is the primeval lord govinda and the cause of all causes in the Bhag- in the bhagavatam also there is a list of many incarnations of the supreme personality of godhead but krishna is described as the original personality of godhead from whom many many incarnations and personalities of godhead expand ate chamsa kala pum pumsa krishna tu bhagwan swayam indrari vyakulam lokam mridyanti yuge yuge all the lists of the incarnation of godhead submitted here with are either pla- plenary expansions or parts of the plenary expansions of the supreme godhead but krishna is the supreme personality of godhead himself therefore krishna is the original supreme personality of godhead the absolute truth the source of both the super soul and the impersonal brahman in the presence of the supreme personality of godhead arjuna's lamentation for his kinsman is certainly unbecoming and therefore krishna expressed his surprise with the word kuta where from such impurities were never expected from a person belonging to the civilized class of men known as aryans the word aryan is applicable to persons who know the value of life and have a civilization based on spiritual realization persons who are led by the material conception of life do not know that the aim of life is realization of the absolute truth vishnu or bhagwan and they are captivated by the external features of the material world and therefore they do not know what liberation is persons who have no knowledge of liberation from material bondage are called non aryans although arjuna was a kshatriya he was deviating from his prescribed duties by declining to fight this act of cowardice is described as befitting the non aryans such deviation from duty does not help one in the progress of spiritual life nor does it even give one the opportunity to become famous in this world lord krishna did not approve of the so called compassion of arjuna for his kinsman so here prabhupad is pointing out the position of krishna shri bhagwan uvacha supreme personality of god here so prabhupad is pointing out touching on many foundational things here he's also giving us two foundational verses of the bhagavatam bhagavatam has two foundational verses prabhupad has put both of them here hmm. that is understanding of brahman parmatma and bhagwan and ete chamsa kalapamsa so and shila prabhupad is also pointing out what are the six qualities of bhagwan as per dictionary of this meaning is given by parasar muni so does anyone know what are the six opulences krishna is full of uh, riches full of strength full of knowledge full of beauty and uh, renunciation and he is famous yeah so these so are the six opulences that's why he is called you. bhagwan thank you So there are so many famous people in the world now. With with social media, people are becoming more and more famous. So there we may have one person who is like the most famous on this earth, 
but then there'll be someone who's going to be more famous in the complete universe. And then there will be someone who's more famous in all the universes. But who's the famous in the spiritual world, in the material world, everyone, everywhere? Krishna. Krishna. Yes, thank you. Krishna is famous not only on this earth, but even in the planets of the demigods, heavenly planets, material, spiritual world, everywhere. No one is more famous than him. Learned, we have so many learned people. We have, you know, the PhDs and we have, the, I'm, I'm, I myself I don't have so much knowledge, like what whatever other degrees that people get, you know, uh, some honorary degrees or whatever. So there's so many learned people. But who's the most learned? Krishna. Yeah, because he's given us the Vedas. The Vedas is the, all the knowledge is in the Vedas. There's no one who's more learned than Krishna. And that they are rich and powerful people. But Krishna, when he was only seven years old, he could lift the Govardhan Hill seven years, uh, for seven days and seven nights. So nobody can be stronger than Krishna. You know, richer. He, when he was here, he had 16,108 wives, so he made 16,108 palaces for each of them. Mm -hmm. Not only that, he was living inside the, each of the palace with him, by himself, with them. He expanded in as many. And then renounced. You know, we get, we get so attached. Oh, I'm so learned. Oh, I am so strong. Oh, I am so rich. I am so powerful. But Krishna, no. Oh, he's, he's very renounced. He's not attached to these, active, uh, the, these things. He's created this entire material world and given us to play. He said, okay, you go. He's given it to us. He's so renounced. So is there any difference between Narayan and Krishna? As it's written here, no living entity, including Brahma, Shiva, or Narayana, can possess op opulences as fully as Krishna. Yeah. Hmm. So there is and there isn't. Some people say that Lord Narayan is the supreme personality of Godhead. That Lord Krishna, uh, Lord Krishna is an incarnation of Vishnu. It's okay. We let them say that. But if really one wants to know that the real position, then Krishna is the original form of, of God and Narayan is his expansion. And that brings us to this verse here. Etecha amsa kalapumsa Krishna's to Bhagavan Swayam. That there are so many incarnations and ex expansions of Krishna. But Krishna is the original personality of God here. Just like candles. One candle can light thousands of other candles. They will all give equal heat and light, but still there is one original candle. So this uh, this verse, it has come from which part? Bhagavatam. Which... Bhagavatam. This is Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 3, Text 28. It's one of the foundational verses of Bhagavatam. Ete chamsa kalapumsa Krishna stu Bhagavan Swayam. There's so many incarnations expansions, you know, Lord Nishingadev, Lord Ramachandra, Lord... Canto 1, chapter? Chapter 3? Chapter 3? Chapter 3, okay. Text 28. Okay, thank you. Krishna is the original form of God. And if you ask specifically what's the difference between Lord Narayan and Krishna, Yogita, you know? Sorry, Mataji, please repeat. Do you know what's the, the difference between Narayan and Krishna? Krishna is the original and Narayana is coming from Krishna. It's an extension. Yes, that's Krishna right. Is the, yeah, he's the original and then the other incarnations and extensions are coming from Krishna only. Yes. So there's also an explanation given. That there, Krishna has full in 64 qualities. Krishna and Narayan has 60 qualities. 
Yeah. Narayan has 60, but Krishna has four additional qualities. So Narayan is also God, but the original form of God is Krishna. And Krishna has something that Narayan doesn't have. And that is, one, his beautiful form. Krishna is so beautiful that even Narayan wants to see Krishna. There is a pastime in the Krishna book, in Bhagavatam. Then um, Krishna has his flute. Krishna has his loving, loving devotees. Krishna is always surrounded by his devotees. He's never alone. And Krishna has loving relationships, these loving pastimes with his devotees. What happens with Narayan? He's lying down in the ocean. Shishna, he's lying down there. You know, so there's not much that people can approach him and have much of a relationship with him. But Krishna, he has friends, he has parents, he has, you know, the gopas, the gopis, the cows, the birds, everyone has a very sweet and loving relationship with Krishna. So Narayan has 60 qualities. Krishna has 64, four additional qualities. Lord Shiva, he has 55 qualities. And Lord Brahma has 50. Lord Brahma is a living entity. Lord Brahma is a living entity. Only when there is no qualified living entity in the universe that Krishna will take an incarnation as Brahma. Otherwise, Brahmaji is like a very qualified living entity and he has 50 of Krishna's qualities. So the living entities, we, we living entities, when we can we get perfected, we can get this 50 of the qualities. 50 qualities of Krishna. We can get them. And, and uh, like then uh, if we say that Lord Vishnu is an expansion of Krishna, right? Uh, so we have maybe in Mahabharata, it is in Mahabharata, it is uh, said that Krishna is born as in uh, he was born as an incarnation of Lord Vishnu. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, you know, so. If someone believes that Lord Vishnu is the original form of God and Krishna is an incarnation, it's okay. We let them, we don't disturb their minds too much because after all, you know, Lord Vishnu, Lord Krishna is the same. But if really one wants to understand that who is the original form of God, then here as we hear in Bhagavatam this verse and also Prabhupada has pointed out the Brahma Samhita where Brahmaji is saying, Ishwara Parma Krishna Sachidananda Govinda Anadi Radhe. Right? We just read it here or no? He's the primal. No. Yeah. Yeah. Ishwara Parma Krishna Sachidananda Vigraha Anadi Radhe Govinda Sarva Karana Karana. So there are many evidences that the pure devotees, that the Acharyas, here, Lord Brahmaji himself is saying that there are so many personalities who have these qualities of Bhagwan, Like, even Lord Vishnu, no? Yes, Krishna's qualities. But, uh, Krishna, he's the original form of God. He's the cause of all causes. Sarva Karana Karan. And in Srimad Bhagavatam, the position of Krishna is very, very clearly described, especially in the first three cantos of Srimad Bhagavatam. And that's the reason we are always advised to, when we hear Bhagavatam, we should start from first canto, first chapter, first verse, and then go gradually, gradually towards the 10th canto. Because people like to hear about 10th canto immediately. Oh, I want to hear about Krishna's pastimes with the gopis and in Vrindavan. But till the time we don't understand the position of Krishna, we will not be able to understand the pastimes. So, the position of Krishna, and Bhagavatam clearly describes how Krishna, he's the original form of God. From him expands Balaram. From Balaramji expands all the Chaturvyuha expansions, Anirudh, Sankarshan, Pradyumna, 
Vasudev. Then again, the Chaturvyuha. Again, Narayan comes from them. Then there's the Mahavishnu, Garbha Dakshai Vishnu, Shiro Dakshai Vishnu. All these incarnations are coming. But the original form of God is Krishna. So there is there's a lot of evidence in the in the scriptures for this. Here Brahmaji is saying that in the Brahma Samhita. And then Bhagavatam is saying that, you know, it's, it's there everywhere. Srila Jiva Goswami pointed this out. That ete cham sakalapam sa Krishna stu Bhagavan Swadam. But as I said, if somebody believes that Lord Vishnu is the original form of God, we let them, at least they are coming to Lord Vishnu. You know? So, we don't need to like get into debates or arguments with them. Is it like that, that in the beginning only Krishna was there and then he expanded himself as Lord Vishnu but again yes. in the Trisha Yoga, Krishna has to come to give this knowledge of Bhagavad Gita because it was lost. So he has to come again as a Krishna. So now those people who think that Krishna is from is coming from Vishnu, so that is yeah, you said that is also okay. But originally Krishna was there. When nothing was there, only Krishna was there. So he expanded himself and he came he, as uh, Krishna, son of Devaki and uh, like this. So yeah, if yeah, if we think that Krishna is just as thank you, Yogita. Yeah, that only five thousand years ago Krishna was born and he appears. No, then we have to understand that. That's why it's called Sarva Karana Karana. Yeah, thank you, Yogita. Very good. Not that Krishna is coming only 5,000 years ago, and that's why Lord Vishnu is older than Krishna, and so how can that happen? Krishna is eternal. Yeah, and he, he continues is... in the Bhagavad Gita. We are going to hear so much evidence. I'm sorry? He gave this Bhagavad Gita knowledge to Sun God also. So it's yes. so long going back, but but then yeah, in the four yeah. chapter we will be creating this. Book. That's right. Millions of years so, ago, he gave this knowledge. You, so you said that Krishna has uh, sixty-four qualities, four qualities extra from Narayana. So what are the four? One is the beautiful form of Krishna. Second yes. is loving face of Krishna. Third is pastimes. No. And the, what is wait, the, wait, wait. I'm sorry. Yogita, your voice is not very clear. Sorry. First, yes, the form. What did you say was the second? Loving face. No, no, no. The form of Krishna, beautiful form of Krishna, his flute. Yeah. Krishna is always with his devotees. He's never alone. He always mm. is with the devotees. So he has these loving devotees and he has this amazing, beautiful pastimes. Yeah. These four, Lord Vishnu does not have. But it is three, you no? Know, it's beautiful form, two handed form with flute. Second is with his devotees. He is always with no, his no, devotees. No, 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 no. The first is Krishna's beauty. Second is that he has a flute. The third is that he has he's always surrounded by devotees. And the fourth is that he's always having loving pastimes with his devotees, the amazing, amazing pastimes. Okay. Yes. We'll come in Bhagavatam more detail, no? Right? Uh, it's a nectar of devotion. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, yeah, Nectar of Devotion tells us how many percent of qualities, like Lord Shiva has 55 qualities. Lord Shiva is a tattva by himself. So he has 55. He's neither Lord Vishnu, he's not, nor an ordinary living entity. He's an identity by himself, the Sadashiv. So that's why he has 55 qualities. Lord Vishnu has 60, Krishna has 64, Brahmaji has 50. We, the Jivatmas, when we get really, really perfect, 
we can have 50 of these qualities, but because we are minute, we can have them to minute degrees. And Krishna, because he's unlimited, he has the qualities unlimitedly. So, but there's one very important part which we have not yet discussed is about Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagavan. That's also um, your Prabhupada is citing the, the another evidence from Bhagavatam, which is also a foundational verse of Bhagavatam. Vadanti tattva vidas tattvam yajnanam advayam brahmati parmatmeti bhagwaniti shabdayate that they are the transcendentalists, people who are searching after the absolute truth. They see the absolute truth as Brahman, Paramatma and Bhagavan. Yeah, this is the phases. Now, Brahma, when somebody has a Brahman realization that God is light, the realization is not wrong, but it's not complete. It's partial realization. It's like, you know, a student is studying maths and then they have just done undergraduate. And then comes somebody comes to understand that God is Paramatma. So that's like doing graduate degree. And then somebody does PhD, then they realize that, oh, God is not only light and Paramatma, but he's a person. And the light that's coming from his body, from his form, and that Paramatma is a feature by which he's pervading the entire universe. He's entering into every atom of the universe and into the heart of every living entity as the Paramatma. Because some people say, oh, God is light. Yeah, okay, so that's not wrong, but the understanding is partial, it's not complete. Oh, God is Paramatma. Yes, is that's also correct, but also the understanding is partial. When we understand that God is a person, that's the complete understanding. Of, so Brahman of refers to absolute truth. Huh? Brahman refers to, for example, like Brahma Kumaris. Nowadays, they think that uh, Brahman is uh, light only. We have to reach to that light. And Brahma Kumari, they say like this. That okay. we have to reach to the of uh, that is only Paramatma, that is the Bhagwan. So, in, okay, they are getting the realization, they have got one step ahead, but still, there are many forms. It's given as a sun example here, like we have sun, sun rays, and sun plant, sun original sun is there. So, they have reached to that sunlight only, but behind that sunlight, there is sun. The rays, and then the sun is there. So, it's like that. Yes, so God is a person. Even in Isopanishad, there is a mantra. Mantra 15, where the devotee is praying, My dear God, please remove this glaring effulgence, which is blinding me. Kindly remove this glaring effulgence so I can see your beautiful face. So, God he has this. Uh, where is where is all this Brahman coming from? Where is the light coming from? It's coming from the body of Krishna, as Prabhupada is explaining here. No, that where is the sunshine coming from? It's coming from the sun planet. Mm -hmm. And once we go inside the sun planet, we will see. Oh, there's the sun god there. Okay, so that is the three phases of understanding. It's also Prabhupada would give the example that the, somebody is at the tra uh, train station, the train is coming, yeah. somebody sees only the light. So he understands, yeah. oh, the train is light and he goes back. He doesn't wait to do further research. Another person, he's waiting on the platform further and he sees the light, but he's also seeing that, oh, there yeah. is this, the, the engine is there and the bogies are there. But he does not wait any longer and he goes away. Now there's a third person. He sees, oh, there's light is there. And then as the train is coming closer, oh, there the engine is there, the different uh, compartments are there. But he is more patient, so he waits, lets the train stop. And he sees inside, oh, that there are people inside, there's, there's uh, 
the seeds, there's the AC, there's this and there's that. So somebody who does research, research, three phases of research, as we just said, somebody, their, their understanding is partial, coming to understand God is light. Somebody does more research, will come to understand that God is Paramatma. And one who has a complete understanding of God will understand that God is a person. The light is coming from his body and the Paramatma is a feature of God by which he's pervading this entire universe. He's entering into every atom of the universe and every and the heart of every living entity as the Paramatma. And that person is Krishna. Krishna is that supreme personality of Godhead, absolute truth. Ete chamsa kalapamsa Krishna stu Bhagavan swayam. And here also um, Brahmaji is saying, Ishvara Parama Krishna Sachidananda Vigraha Anadi Radhi Govinda Sarva Karana Kara. Okay, uh, so okay? to, con yeah, to conclude, Brahman is just light, right? And Paramatma is the Lord, or we can say the soul that lives in every living entity. Is it? The super soul, not the soul, the super soul. We are the souls. Paramatma is the super soul that lives within us. Yes. That is Vishnu form. The Paramatma is a Vishnu form, four-handed, and he's living inside each and every one of us. And Bhagwan is, yes, Lord Krishna himself. So inside the heart of the living entity, there are Thank two. You. One is the soul, V, the living entity, and the Paramatma, the super soul. Mm. But actually many other, uh, I would say not religion or uh, like organizations or uh, as, um, like there are some self-realization associations or, you know, many organizations like that. They only talk about Brahman. Yeah. So as we read in the, we are just reading here, no, that the transcendentalists, there are different types of transcendentalists. Some will reach up to Brahman, some will reach up to Parman, uh, Paramatma, and some will reach up to the Bhagwan. Bhagwan feature. Absolute. So it's not wrong. It's not wrong to say that God is light, but it's partial. The understanding is partial. It's not complete. Like absolute truth is realized in three phases of understanding by the knower, and all of them are identical. Such phases are expressed as Brahma, Paramatma, and Bhagwan. Yes, that, that, that school of thought is there. It's an authorized one. The Vedas accept it. So does this mean that whoever claims that Brahman is the goal or the destination, so they are just partially enlightening you or they are just partially enlightened? Yes. Yeah. Yes, it's partial. Okay. Yeah. Because even we read Kabir Doha's right. He just said you don't. Uh, he he just says you don't have to go anywhere. Lord is within you. Yes. Yeah, so Lord is within us. That's the Paramatma. Mm -hmm. That's Paramatma realization. And also, they actually uh, like Murti Puja. You know, they're totally yeah. against Murti Puja and all those. So, what has to be explained the Murti Puja is that everything belongs to Krishna. Right? Everything mm -hmm. belongs to Krishna. And Krishna has entered into every atom of the universe as Paramatma. So, he's also entered into the stone. Mm -hmm. And Krishna takes on the form of the Murti to accept our service. Otherwise, how will we be able to serve him? So for our for our benefit, he's taking up this form. So if somebody says that God is everywhere, yes, yeah, so then why isn't he in the murti? So he's in the murti also. And he's accepting our service in the murti as the murti. 
as the archa vigraha when the lord is in the lord is invited into the murti he becomes the archa vigraha there is a special process where the pure devotee invites the lord kindly please so as we are just reading that there are partial understandings of the supreme lord that lord is light it's a partial understanding that the lord is paramatma in the heart as us that's a higher understanding and then the complete understanding is to understand that god is a person and the light is coming from his body just like from the sun the sunshine is coming and that paramatma is his feature is his uh, feature lord vishnu and the form of paramatma is lord vishnu and he's in the heart of all of us and also in the atom of every uh, i'm sorry every atom of every universe yes okay. and it's very very nicely and very detailed explained in um Bhagavatam, especially the first three cantos of Bhagavatam. When we were reading it, is repeatedly the, how the creation happens, the position of Krishna is very detailed given. And that's the reason Shla Prabhupada really stressed in the first three cantos of Bhagavatam to understand Krishna's position as the Supreme Lord. So if there's I many episodes. Huh? I'm sorry. We say uh, Brahman and Paramatma, we have understood like this. It's the light. And then Paramatma, we know that it is the super soul within us. And for Bhagwan, we can understand it like that, that when we see Krishna is in everything and everywhere, in each of us, in every living entity, whether it is a tree or what, whatever we see, Krishna is there. So when we think like that, so that is the Bhagwan teacher. That's is Paramatma, right? no? That's Paramatma, That's right? Par okay. That's Paramatma feature that Krishna is in every atom, Krishna is everywhere. That's Paramatma. We have to understand that Krishna himself is a person. Yes, he's pervading this entire universe as the Paramatma. But where is he himself? He's in Golok Vrindavan. What is he doing? Yeah. He's playing with the cows and the, go go the gopas and the gopis. And yeah. he has this loving pastimes with his devotees. He's always surrounded with his devotees. He's having loving pastimes with his devotees. That's Krishna. That's the Bhagwan feature. That he's a person. Oh. He's the oh, Supreme right. person. Okay, now I got it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So should we stop here for today? Yes. We continue reading Bhagavad Gita more and more. We will be able to understand Krishna's position more and more. Mm -hmm. Bhagavad Gita ki jai, Shla Prabhupada ki jai, Gaur Bhakta Vrinda ki jai,